My special appreciation goes to Dr. Malay Sharma for this kind of invitation. The topic assigned to me is Therapeutic U.S. in the year 2021. EUS was introduced as a new imaging modality about four decades ago. Although it was a crude imaging modality initially, it made a great stride to accurate diagnosis. Nowadays, we can use not only EUS FNAB, but also elastography, contrast enhanced EUS, and fine flow image for accurate diagnosis. It is also used actively for the minimally invasive therapy of pancreatic biliary disease. These are areas of therapeutic EUS in the year 2021. Pseudocyst drainage, biliary drainage, pancreatic drainage, gastrojejunostomy, EUS CPN or CGM for pain control, interstitial brachytherapy, vascular therapy, gene therapy, and the tumor ablation. Among these, Several areas are already covered by other doctors and the time is limited. So today I will be just focusing on tumor ablation. There are various types of tumors in the pancreas, neuroendocrine tumor, mucinous cystic neoplasm, and the pancreatic cancer. How are we treating these cases? Current principle is, if the lesion is purely benign, regular follow-up is recommended. If it is malignant or potentially malignant lesion, surgical resection is generally recommended. However, surgical resection carries significant morbidity, even mortality, and long-term functional disability is the major issue. This is 99-year-old patient with recurrent attacks of hypoglycemia. The CT scan did not show any lesion in the pancreas. So we did EUS examination to find out the lesion in the pancreas. When they did EUS, there was about one cm size hypoechoic nodule in the head of the pancreas. When we added contrast in the US, this is a B mode image. This is contrast in harmonic imaging mode. Uh, this is the time after contrast injection. After about 10 seconds after, uh, during arterial phase, the lesion shows strong arterial enhancement. This is the typical finding of NET, including insulinoma. So based on clinical history, biochemical data, and the EUS finding and the contrast in the EUS findings, we thought this lesion was the culprit lesion causing hypoglycemia. But the problem was how we treat this case. This is almost 100 year old uh, patient, operational pancreas, head was risky and the chemotherapy may not be a good idea. Observation was not possible due to recurrent collapse of the patient. So we decided to do US guided ethanol ablation. To ablate the lesion, 22 gauge FNA needle was used and the bottom half was already treated. Now we are treat targeting upper half of the lesion. After insertion of the needle to the upper hypoechoic area, we injected 0.2 to 0.4 cc ethanol into several areas. Three days after therapy, we repeated contrast in SDUS. This is before therapy, this is after therapy. If we focus in on this red arrow area, there was strong arterial enhancement before treatment. But after therapy, same area showed no contrast enhancement at all. So we assumed that this lesion was effectively uh, controlled and the patient was discharged. The patient never had hypoglycemic attack thereafter. This is one example of US guided tumor therapy. US guided tumor therapy is actively investigated by several methods, ablation therapy using ethanol, RFA, laser, or PDT. 
intratumoral injection of gene or immuno agent or chemo agent has been tried for long period of time, showing variable result. Among these, what I think will be useful in the near future are ethanol injection for solid tumor, like previous case, or US guided RFA for solid or cystic tumor, and ethanol injection for cystic tumors. So I would like to touch each method briefly. Firstly, ethanol injection for solid tumor. Ideal indication of ethanol in injection are small benign tumors such as insulinoma, neuroendocrine tumor, or solid pseudopapillary neoplasm. If you see this review article, we can realize that this technique is investigated by several study groups showing effectiveness and the safety. But there are still issues on this technique. The method of injection is not standardized yet. The amount of ethanol is not calculated scientifically. It is empirical treatment. Remnant viable tumor is another issue when we target the larger tumor. Let me move on US guided RFA. This amine type one case and the patient already received multiple operations. Now we can see another entity in the resection margin of the pancreas. The patient refused any more surgery. So we decided to ablate this region by US guided RFA. 19 gauge RFA electrodes was inserted deeply in the right side of the screen and started ablation using 50 watts and 10 second ablation for one spot. After one spot ablation, we retracted the needle into the superficial part of the lesion and repeated ablation. This is one line ablation. After one line ablation, we removed the electrode and punctured uh, to the left side of the screen and uh, repeated the, another line of ablation. And this is one plane ablation. After one plane ablation, we tried to find another plane and the continued ablation to cover most of the tumor. Left side is before treatment and the right side is one month after treatment. We can see a necrotic area in the tumor. In our study, we included 10 patients, seven NET, two SPN, and one insulinoma. When we analyzed our treatment outcome, 70% of the patients showed complete resolution. And uh, two cases showed minor complication, such as abdominal pain or pancreatitis. So at the current moment, indications of US guided RFA can be neuroendocrine tumor, SPN, or pancreatic cancer, and adrenal tumor. US guided RFA can also be applied for the palliation of pancreatic cancer. This is one of the case. Our group is conducting the clinical trial of combined chemotherapy and RFA for pancreatic cancer patients. Here we can see large tumor mass in the head of the pancreas. For the treatment of this tumor, we did US guided RFA several sessions to cover this large hypoechoic mass. And on the day of RFA, we also combined the chemotherapy. After several sessions of US guided RFA combined chemotherapy, now we can clearly see marked size decrease of this original tumor. If you look at the reviews on US guided RFA, we can realize there are many groups investigating US guided RFA actively, showing variable result. There are potential complications after US guided RFA, pancreatitis, MPD stricture, perforation, and bleeding. When we are trying RFA for pancreatic tumor, we should remember that the pancreas is very close to many vital organs. Lastly, for the management of pancreatic cystic tumor, we can use ethanol injection technique while ethanol lavage. 
if there is any growing cystic tumor in the pancreas, we can use uh, EUS for the delineation of the lesion. This is cystic tumor. Now, linear EUS scope is going into the stoma, and we can delineate the lesion. And we can puncture the cyst and aspirate the cystic fluid. And then pure ethanol can be injected into the cystic cavity. So aspiration and the injection of ethanol can be repeated three or four times. And then finally, we can insulate a small amount of pacrotexol into the cystic cavity. This technique is called EUS guided ethanol lavage or cyst ablation. The ideal indications of cyst ablations are unilocular or oligolocular cystic tumor, size ranging from 2 to 6 cm and without malignancy and without clear MPD communication. When we treated this large MCN after two times, after two, se uh, two sessions, we can see complete resolution in seven years time. We analyzed our long-term outcome data after US guided cyst ablation and reported the result in endoscopy 2017. Among 164 included patients, 158 patients received long-term follow-up. The mean follow-up was more than five years and some of the patients received follow-up more than 10 years. When you look at the treatment response, complete resolution was observed in about 72% of the patients and the partial resolution in about 20% of the patients and the persistent cysts in about 8% of the patients. Some may argue the long-term durability of this type of therapy. So we analyzed the long-term recurrence rate. Once CR is achieved, even after 10-year follow-up, the recurrence rate was just 1.7%. So it is quite durable type of therapy. There are several groups actively investigating the technique ethanol injection for cystic tumors. I think this method can be used wisely in the near future. In conclusion, at the current moment, EUS guided tumor therapy is actively investigated for the management of cystic tumors and the solid tumors of the pancreas. In the future, early diagnosis followed by EUS guided tumor therapy can be the mainstay of therapy instead of sending patients just for surgery. Thank you very much for your kind attention.